What's up, guys? This is Nick from Arch City Poker, and in today's vlog, I'm going to be uh, continuing the How to Beat Live Low Stakes Poker series. Uh, today's topic is going to be dealing with loose players. Uh, I had a couple of suggestions for uh, or requests, I guess, for this topic, basically how to deal with wide uh, calling ranges preflop, how to deal with loose players overall. Uh, you know, when we get into this topic, it, it really depends on what type of loose player we're talking about, because there's two different kinds, and then there's extremes that are based off of those two kinds. Uh, you have your loose passive player, and then you have your loose aggressive player. And then off of those two, you have players that are so passive that they have like almost zero, uh, like a zero raising frequency, zero betting frequency, they'll just call everything. And then you have your super uh, hyper aggressive players like your maniacs. But for the most part, most players will fall most loose players will fall into one or the other, whether it's loose passive or loose aggressive. So uh, as far as loose passive players go, they are going to have very split and defined ranges pre-flop, and that makes it much easier for you to range them post-flop, makes it very easy to play against them. Uh, they're going to be limping most of their hands, a lot of their hands uh, in their range. They're going to be limp, open limping, over limping. When they go to raise, uh, that is a signal that they are quite strong. Uh, they're going to have hands that are like big aces, broadways, um, usually larger pairs, and that's very easy to range them post flop because you know if they're raising those types of hands pre flop, if you get a broadway heavy board, then that's going to smash them. Uh, if they are limping or over limping pre flop, then on those types of boards or actually most boards in general, they're going to have a very wide and weak range. Uh, to how do we exploit that? That's you know the biggest thing in poker is how do we exploit our opponents in these live low stakes games? Well, against the loose passive guys, you really fold any aggression uh, pre flop. So if they are raising or three betting, then you're you're going to need very good hands to continue against them, and you exploit them by uh, being able to fold some hands that maybe you would normally call or three bet against uh, you know an unknown opponent. Also, just overall coming in, uh, entering the pot with stronger ranges. So if you if these opponents are limping in, then you can try to isolate and uh, raise them with a linear range of good hands, uh, like, you know, good hands that you would normally open with anyway. Um, I, I think that's just the easiest way to exploit them pre-flop. Post-flop's where you're really going to make your money off of them, though. Uh, their post-flop tendencies are to overcall, uh, just call at way too high of a frequency. They aren't going to be playing aggressive enough. They aren't going to be basically just raising enough. Um, they're they're going to be very transparent post-flop because when they show any signs of aggression, Especially, especially when you're uh, when you have the initiative post flop uh, as like the PFR, the pre flop raiser, that is a signal that they are very strong in their range. Usually, uh, very much at the top of their range, very unbalanced to uh, you know having a value heavy range. So, I think the best way to exploit them uh, post flop is to just value bet, uh, and I mean value bet at a very high frequency. Lower your bluffing frequencies. Uh, you know, add hands to your value betting range because these players, these loose passive players, they're just going to be calling you down uh, way too late post flop. They're going to be calling, calling, calling with worse hands. They're going to let you know when they have better hands. They're going to raise you post flop. So value bet and extremely high frequency. I, to, I guess to give you guys a, a quick example, let's say you isolate one of them pre flop with uh, king jack offsuit. Flop comes jack seven three. That's a hand that you might normally. Um, use like a little bit of a mixed strategy it might not only be it might only be worth you know maybe two streets of value against some opponents it might only be worth one i would say most opponents probably two against these type of opponents you can go for three streets uh they're going to be over calling calling down too light uh worst jacks will call all three streets hands even like pocket eights will, will often call uh three streets seven x on a jack seven three board so um i would definitely value bet at a much higher frequency a, a, to kind of, I guess, play off of that and get to my next point, bet fold against these players. Pot controlling should not exist against these players. Uh, the perfect strategy against them is the bet fold because, like I said, they're going to be very transparent with their ranges post-flop. If you bet and then they raise, they're usually going to always have like a better hand. Uh, it's, they're going to be very unbalanced to the top of their range at that point, and they're kind of letting you play perfectly in that sense. There's no sense in pot controlling against these guys because you lose value uh, on, on a lot of your value hands. So, and, and this will be the case, especially on wet boards. Um, boards that have flush draws available, possibly some straight draws that are available. These players will not want you to get there. They do not want to be sucked out on. Their passive tendencies will go out the window and they will protect their hand at all costs. They will, they will have uh, very value-heavy 
very value heavy uh, raising frequency at that point. So value bet at a very high frequency, bet fold 100%, pretty much 100% of your range uh, against these types of players. That is how you will best exploit them uh, post-flop. Getting into loose aggressive players, their uh, their pre let's talk about pre-flop first, I guess. Their uh, open raising ranges will be often very weak and wide. And for both types of loose opponents, they a lot of the ones that are uh, poor players, they're going to be very positionally unaware. They're not going to care about position. They just want to play hands and see flops. So uh, these opponents will, these loose aggressive ones will open raise hands uh, from like, let's say under the gun in one of these nine handed uh, live low stakes games. They'll have hands like ace, eight offsuit, seven, four suited. Uh, they will, they'll have a very wide and weak range. Now, how to exploit them pre-flop? Well, similar to lose passive opponents, you're going to just want to come in with stronger ranges. Uh, your better hands and stronger ranges will often dominate their ranges post-flop. Now, against these opponents, you're going to have to go about it a little more differently, uh, in my opinion. I think three-betting them uh, more frequently is the best way to go about it because, you know, if they're going to be open raising so many hands in the range, then I would say that you need to be three-betting them more often with your stronger range, for often for value, uh, more often than not. How you go about three betting them uh, with your three betting strategy is going to depend on how they continue. So let's say your loose aggressive opponent is calling every single three bet that you make and he's out of position. You're going to want a more linear range. Uh, you're going to want hands that are just good, basically. You're going to want hands, you know, the obvious top of your range, aces, kings, queens, ace, king, ace, queen suited. But then you're going to want hands like ace, jack, king, ten suited, like basically any suited broadways, some offsuit uh, broadways. Pairs like eights, nines, tens, those start to uh, creep into your value range. So yeah, you're going to be a little more linear because uh, that range will dominate their calling range. Now, if your loose aggressive opponent is the type that will open raise, you know, like 60% of his range preflop, but then he folds to pretty much most three bets you make unless he has a hand near the top of his range, then you're going to want to be a little more polarized. Uh, you're going to want to have hands like aces and kings, and then maybe something like ace five suited, maybe a combo like king six suited. Uh, you're not going to want to waste your post-flop post -flop value uh, with hands like king queen suited if that's how your opponent's going to play because then it doesn't do you any good. Uh, there's more value in, in dominating them post-flop. So um, that's how I would go about exploiting these loose aggressive opponents pre-flop. Post-flop, basically they just have a very high C betting and barreling frequency. Uh, they when check to will just kind of go nuts a lot of time and just bet, bet, bet. Uh, they take checking as a sign of weakness. So they're very easy to induce. Uh, they rely very heavily on information that you give them. They, many players in low stakes games, when they, when I see them go against a very loose, aggressive opponent, they tighten up. Uh, they play very ABC, very, very straightforward. Their money is, is a little more scared money in my opinion. So, uh, the best way to exploit these players post-flop is to basically just kind of hide that info from them. Uh, I would say disguise your range, flat hands that are near the top of your range more often than not. Maybe instead of c-betting ace-king on king-8-5, uh, you might go into check-call, check-call, and then maybe check-raise-river. Um, they That is going to be the most profitable way to, to continue against these opponents because like I said, they they like to bet when checked to. They love to barrel at high frequencies. So uh, the best way is to just get sticky with them. And the thing is, a lot of these boards might run out kind of scary when you guys do this. Uh, let's say you're out of position. You call with fives against one of these opponents' uh, raises, and flop comes like nine five three with two diamonds. You're. I still think the best way to profit off of them is to check call flop, and then often even check call the turn sometimes. Uh, like I said, you want to disguise hands that are near the top of your range. These opponents will go barrel crazy on you. And in that specific scenario, let's say even a diamond comes on the turn, a lot of times it's still going to be very profitable to check call that turn and then uh, probably check call the river because your opponents were just, they're going to barrel these scare cards like crazy, these loose aggressive opponents, especially the really poor ones. So uh, yeah, just flat more hands near the top of your range. I would say even increase your bluffing frequencies uh, with hands that are like draws or hands that are near the bottom of your range. Uh, your opponents, like I said, your loose aggressive opponents, especially the bad ones, will rely on this information. And they are able to play perfectly when most ABC opponents in these games uh, raise them because that means that those opponents are very value heavy. 
It's like the loose passive opponents when they raise you guys when you are value betting or bet folding. Uh, they're very unbalanced towards value value combos. So against these loose aggressive opponents, uh, it, you're almost playing backwards in a sense. You're almost check calling with your better hands and then uh, increasing your bluffing frequencies with your weaker hands um, and hands that aren't really good enough to call with, your draws. So if you have an opponent that starts to realize this, obviously, and uh, he is somebody that's a little bit better and maybe capable of exploiting this, then you will definitely have to mix up your strategy and balance it a little bit. But for the most part, uh, I think that's the best way to go about uh, exploiting and, and combating this type of opponent strategy. So uh, I hope this vlog was valuable to you guys. And uh, as always, if you have any questions or uh, comments about this topic, then feel free to fire away and um, I'll answer them the best I can. But yeah, I think with these loose opponents, it just depends what type of loose. And then it's uh, pretty simple to go about developing a counter strategy to exploit them. So um, yeah, this is Nick from Arch City Poker. Till next time, guys.